All right, fam. So today I'm going to talk about The Fever King. Um, I just finished it. I listened to the audiobook. Um, and l literally yesterday, that's all I did, essentially. Um, I, I, I mean, I drew a little bit and like I, I did stop and watch some YouTube. But like I mainly just listened to the audiobook, y'all. So it was fucking lit. So I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about it in case you aren't familiar with it. And then I'm going to give you like a little ramble review like I did with Call Down the Hawk. So The Fever King takes place in like uh, roughly 100 years from now. Maybe it's 150. I'm not quite sure. Um, and it takes place in a world where magic exists, but magic makes you sick. And you either die from it or you become like, what do they call it? I forget what they call it. Um, you become like somebody who can do magic, essentially. Like you have like a superpower, essentially. Um, so like, you can be like a technopath or a telepath, or like you can do other shit, I don't know, in this world. Um, the US does not exist. The US, in fact, collapsed in 2019. Um, and so it takes place, and there's like Carolinia, um, which is, like, the main, like, dominant state country thing. And then there is Atlantia, which is, like, this country that, like, people are immigrating from because there's, like, a war. There, there was a war, I think, and it got really bad. And so people from Atlantia are trying to get into Carolinia. But Carolinia is like, no, we don't want you here. No refugees, please. Um, there's like refugee camps and stuff like that. It's really cool. And like, I don't know. It deals with like current issues in a really cool way. It follows a main character named Gnome. And Gnome is technically, he was born in Carolinia, but his parents are from Atlantia and they were never like actually registered um so technically they're like illegal immigrants um so he's like the son but they're both dead and the book starts out and he's like trying to get into like i guess it's essentially the military um but it's for like people who have magic and he's trying to get into like level four is what they call it um and that's where like all the like really super powerful magical people train um and so yeah i'm not gonna i don't know how much is given away on the back so i'm not because i i read the audiobook so i don't I, I don't have a physical copy to reference so i don't know if i should tell you anything more than that um i will tell you i will tell you there is a lovely hate to love slow burn romance in this book Oh, and by the way, Gnome is bisexual. Um, and there is a male-male romance in the book. So, it's hate to love, slow burn. It's real good. I really enjoyed it. So that's the synopsis um, that I'm going to give you. And my little ramble review that I'm going to give you. Uh, okay, so let's first, let's first talk about how great the world building in this is. Because, like, yeah, it's technically the United States, but, like, it's not the United States. So, like, there's a little bit of world building in there. In a sense that, like, you, like, have these different countries that are, like, not the United States, but they derive from the United States. So, like, it's not really world building, but it is. And it's, like, just real good. It's, like, it's not the type where they give you long exposition to explain the world building. It's kind of one where it just drops you in there, which I'm finding that I really like. Um, I didn't like it so much in the fifth season because I felt like that world was just too complicated to do that with. Um, and I also didn't like the second person. Let's be real. I mainly stopped reading it because of the second person. But... Um, this is the second book that I've read, like, in a row that has world building like this, and I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. So the characters in this book are all essentially, like, morally gray. None of them have their shit together, and they do ambiguous things. 
actually some of them do not so ambiguous things. Some of them just straight up do things that are definitely not right. But the people that are doing said things think they're right. So we love we love characters who don't have their shit together. Um, and we, we honestly we love morally gray characters too. Um, so yeah, that was that was lit. Um, love the characters. Uh, and let's see the plot. So okay, there's a lot of politics in the plot. The main plot line is very politics heavy, um, but not in a bad way. Like. It's not beat you over the head with current events politics. It's like, I'm going to sneak in these current events into this futuristic world. And it's going to work really well. And you're going to be like, oh my god. This is really well written and really well executed. Wow. And yeah, so there's a lot of politics. But the politics are really good. Um, and yeah, so... A lot of politics in the plot. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away, so I'm not gonna like straight up tell you all the politics that happen in it. I can't. I don't want to tell you any of the politics that happen in it because I fear that one of them may be a slight spoiler. So I'm just gonna tell you that politics happen, and also r romance happens, which you know I ate that shit up, man. <laughs> it was so good. Um, so. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Okay, I already told you basically all you can know. The two characters start out, one of them thinks that the other hates them. It's real good. Gives me strong, like, it's definitely a hate, a good hate to love. Because this, the main character really thinks that the love interest hates him at first. And, like, they slowly start becoming friends. But, like, there's a good, there's a good scene where it's, like, they're becoming friends, but there's, like, a little bit more to that. And then there's another scene where, like, the, like, you think something's gonna happen, but it doesn't. And then something happens. And then there's a lot of angst. There's so much angst, y'all. So, there's a lot of angst. Um, there's a smidge of hurt comfort, but it just turns into angst again. Um, there's so much. And honestly, I loved it. So, yeah, those are the tropes that you, you gotta love. You gotta love you some hate to love. You gotta love a slow burn. And you gotta love angst. Or else you're not gonna really enjoy it. Because that's what it is. I don't know what else to tell you about it. Um, it's but like without giving you spoilers. <laughs> like it's just, it's so good. And more people should read it because it's really good. And the author is non-binary. That's by Victoria Lee, by the way. Um, the Fever King by Victoria Lee. Go check it out. Um, it's on Scribd. I, that's where I got the audiobook from. Um, and they're doing a 30 day free trial if you want to look that up, so you can read the audiobook. The audiobook is really narrated well. I will say, the one flaw in the audiobook is that there are sections where it's like a video recording or like an archived file, and that's a little strange to listen to, but it's not bad. Also, there's a little like low key, like on the lowest key. On the on the very lowest key smut. That was a little strange to listen to. But I digress. I have the sequel. There's a sequel to it. I don't know if it's going to be like just a duology. Or if it's going to be a series. Or what. Because I don't know. Uh, but the sequel just came out this year in March. Um, and I ordered it through my local independent bookstore. Because I canceled my Amazon Prime membership. And it was like a dollar more on my indie bookstore with like free shipping. I just have to wait five to seven days for it. <sighs> I wish I had a time machine. Anyway, um, go read The Fever King. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.